Hello and thank you for joining us on Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I'm Nadja Atikushani and we begin with news from Sudan. Ousted Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdat has been reinstated after being placed under house arrest during a military coup last month. In addition, all political detainees will be released as part of a new agreement between the military, civilian leaders and ex-rebel groups. On 25 October, Sudan's military declared a state of emergency and dissolved the civilian leadership. The coup sparked weeks of mass protests in which at least 40 people died. The deal was reached late on Saturday night and is to be signed into action on Sunday. The head of Sudan's Umma party, Fadlala Bormanase, confirmed. Meanwhile, one of the ECOWAS EU interventions in West Africa, the Peace Security and Stability Project, PSS, targeted at building and maintaining regional peace and good governance, has ended in Abuja. Charles Alpha reports that participants used the summit to recount achievements while evaluating bottlenecks in the realization of the ECOWAS EU full objective. About all the results for years, ECOWAS and the EU partnered in many key intervention areas in Africa with the aim of supporting the ECOWAS conflict prevention and resolution mandate. The strategic support has now ended with a sharing recommendations of sustainability, monitoring and efforts to complete other projects. The European Union has been uh, supporting ECOWAS for so long and is going to continue doing that under this fine mechanism. So what's coming to an end is just one project. Apart from the intervention in Gambia, Mali and Guinea, the ECOWAS EU's peace, security and stability project have intervened in capacity building, procurement of equipment for ECOWAS and related institutions. Uh, the security sector reform uh, support to the, the Gambia uh, is, is a very good example of what we have done. The support to uh, the small arms project of the ECOWAS Commission and to our member states are uh, also key examples of how the project has been uh, very instrumental. Um, we are here today not just to celebrate the achievements, but also to ponder on you know, the vital, the key lessons that um, we may have learned. What exactly could have been done better? There were calls to engage the private sector more in order to collectively fight insecurity in some parts of the West African region. In Abuja, Charles Alpha, NTA News. And still on relations, ECOWAS is poised to strengthen its relationship with the Republic of Cape Verde. This came to the fore when the Verdean Prime Minister, Ulysses Correa y Silva, visited the ECOWAS Commission in Nigeria in search of stronger bilateral ties. Charles Alpha again reports. Regarded as one of the most important visits in recent times, the visit of the Vedan Prime Minister, Zilefis Silva, to the ECOWAS coincided with the inauguration of the Cape Verde Embassy in Nigeria. Cape Verde is hoping to intensify regional integration, and Zilefis believes there is every need to align with the rest of the West African states as each country's economy and culture cannot thrive enough 
without the support of ECOWAS and Nigeria in particular. First of all, diplomacy is wise, and that we, that's why we take the first step. The embassy is the first step to a better integration. And uh, economically talking, to increase the trade between uh, Cape Verde and, and, the, and the region is important to invest in the maritime and airline connection. Some of the projects, for example, the community development projects, we're going to do the lagos Abidjan Highway, and that is also going to be extended all the way to Cape Verde. So perhaps we also have, uh, I think, uh, marine projects that we're working on, uh, where Cape Verde is a part of that. Of course, if they make a case, we're ready to look specifically, and if they make a request and there's funding available, we would fund it. The Prime Minister is convinced Nigeria and Cape Verde stand to benefit more if they work together to explore the opportunities that abound to both countries. In the past, the Cape Verde government has solicited the support of Nigeria in the development of its music, film, and other areas of creative industry. In Abuja, Charles Alpha, NTN News. The Force Commander, Multinational Joint Task Force, MNJTF, Major General Abdul Khalifa Ibrahim has hosted a joint delegation from the French military intelligence led by Vice Admiral Denis Dutron and United States Africa Command AFRICOM led by Brigadier General Rose Gerahori. The force commander commended the stabilizing role of U.S. and France in Africa. In a statement by Colonel Mohamed Douli, the Chief of Military Public Information Headquarters in N'Djamena, the delegation is strategic. The delegation consists of strategic partners and has been urged by the vo force commander to explore ways in further supporting the ongoing operation. Meanwhile, the Minister of Defense. Meanwhile, I'll take another report as that report is not yet ready. Reports indicate that the location of bandit kingpin Bello Gudaturji, his subordinate commander Bello Buzu, and their cohorts operating within Sokoto and some parts of Zamfara State may have been destroyed in airstrikes carried out by the Nigerian Air Force under Operation Hadarindaji. Military sources indicate that the strikes were carried out in the early hours of 20th November 2021 in Isa local government area of Sokoto State, where locals in the area reported seeing the bodies of the neutralized bandits in the camp. And in what could be described as effective communal policing, residents of Kulundo Chase 3 in Iloring have impounded a car allegedly belonging to a gang of robbers who have been terrorizing the people in the area. Kende Omolosha reports that the people are worried about what they describe as poor response from the police. Having lost more than 200 domestic animals and other valuables to the thieves, residents of Kulende Street 3 launched a discreet intelligence garden to apprehend the perpetrators. Their efforts paid off on Monday when a blue saloon car, suspected to be belonging to the criminals, was sighted in the area and attempts were made to apprehend the occupants. On sensing the danger ahead, Occupants of the vehicle tried to escape, but ran into a ditch, which made them abandon the car and fled the scene. Though the car has been demobilized, while documents and other items found in it were removed, some people attempted to recover the vehicle overnight, but met a brick wall. An Okada man brought two men that claimed to own the vehicle. Then I said, no, they cannot take the car. But uh, the police say you should call them. Immediately they are around. So on hearing that, they ran away. Residents are however disturbed that Kulende police station to which they reported the incident has neither time to remove the car nor investigate the case. What I expected them to do is to, in fact, gear us up so that we will do more. Whereas the police are there. Don't do this, don't do that. They are cautioning us. And we, instead of doing these things, they are not doing anything. Well, they say if you see something, you should say something. We saw something, we say something, we talk to the I admin. Mean, we reported instead of them to come and act in time. Uh, they refused up to now. Meanwhile, the divisional police officer who declined comment on camera denied the allegation, insisting that no complaint was lodged at the station. 
According to Kulindi residents, if the concept of community policing is to be effectively promoted and application of jungle justice discouraged, swift response to public complaints should be central to the operation of security agencies. Kainde Omoloto, NT News. Still on security, more than 540 kidnapped victims, including 95 students, have regained freedom within the past two months of telecommunication shutdown in Zamfara State. Governor Bello Muhammad confirmed this at the swearing-in ceremony of some public officers in Gusau and announced the immediate reopening of seven major livestock markets across the state. Jamila Ibrahim reports. The shutdown of telecommunication networks and the suspension of UTB markets in all parts of Zamfara State are some of the latest strategies adopted by the government to stem the tide of armed bandits and their collaborators to run against the state. Speaking at the swearing in ceremony of some new public officers at the government house, Gusau, Governor Bello Muhammad says the measure is progressively yielding the desired results. The government has so far been able to rescue a total of 544 of the thieves from the bandits. Series of arrests of suspected bandits and their collaborators were made across the 14 local government councils. The covering of thousands of arrested cattle from the bandits. Governor Mohammed who mentioned that the achievements are clear manifestations of the improved security situation in the state, which informed government decision to reopen more TV and livestock markets in some local government areas of the state. However, want people in the state against taking law into their hands. To the newly sworn in two commissioners, ten special advisors, eight permanent secretaries, and the state auditor general. The governor expected them to bring their wealth of experience to bear in justifying the confidence reposed in them. The new public officials were subjected to swearing with the glorious Quran, dissociating themselves from bandits and their activities. In Gusau, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTE News. Let's now join Adiola in our Lagos Network studios for more reports on Nationwide. Hello, Adiola. Hello, Najwati. The turnout of passengers is gradually picking up at the Mobolaji Junction train station in Lagos following the suspension of strike by railway workers. Michael Olaleye reports that the resumption of train services in an ease and added advantage for commuters over the increased traffic situation usually witnessed at the end of the year on the road. Life has returned to the Mobalaji Johnson train station in Lagos, but not at intensity when halted some few days ago. The beauty, however, is that the preference for the rail system of transportation along the corridor remains unwavering, and it is not surprising when Mayo Wadenimo, a businessman, says that his entire trip to Ibado, the deliberate is extended while the strike lasted because of the stress associated with traveling on the road. With this, you can as well do other things. You can program your time well. You can uh, multitask because you know that there's sanity in the train, in the coaches. So it's a big relief for us. The feelings are same. And from the disposition of Bad Mosabiodun, having the trains back on the track eliminates a lot of pressure. And we feel very happy that they are back because they have been using the tension of uh, transportation ever since we started. Tie your money, you got the information about the suspension of strike by railway workers was delayed, and this invariably affects some business decisions for the week. If I don't know, I'll come yesterday. I don't know when they started actually, but I have to make some calls to come this morning. Say, good one, call us strike. For over a year, I've not been driving home. I've been taking trains. We've been on that system for a very long time, using the road. Yeah. So it's nothing to be compared. So we are glad that they are back, actually. Traffic and commercial activities around the Lagos Ibarra Rail Corridor are expected to pick up in the coming days. In Lagos, Michael Alaleye, NT News. Lagos state government has intervened in the plight of a bereaved family who lost their teenage daughter to a stray bullet four months ago in a Jota Agres of Lagos. The intervention came in form of a two-bedroom apartment handed over to the family to make life comfortable for them. Musa Toliat reports. In four months since Makai met her untimely death, 
on the day when police efforts to dispatch the urbanization valley threw her family into bereavement. Several visits by the Lagos State Government delegation to Lake Jumaket's mother culminated in a decision to offer a decent accommodation to the family with a cash permission to go with it. So here we are at the new place of abode of Mrs. Isoyu Wakoyuluki. We have a temporary arrangement here uh, for her to stay with her children. The place has been furnished. Um, there is arrangement and provision for electricity. All the basic amenities that a family would need has been uh, provided. The state government gesture elicited emotional reactions from the late Jumakesh mother who is shadowed with the responsibility of taking care of three other siblings of the deceased. I didn't expect this gesture. I thank the Lagos State Government that I want to appeal for a decent job to meet the needs of my family. Special advisor to the government on administration hinted that other plans to further ameliorate the plight of the family will be announced soon. In Lagos, Musa Tolias, NTU News. Zen rest and chop will bring us the next set of reports from that zone after this break to stay with us. The League of Women Voters of Nigeria, NILO, is set to host women and men from across the globe in Abuja on the 25th of November 2021. Celebrating its 25th anniversary with the theme Nigerian Women Overcoming Challenges in Politics and Leadership. Notable speakers are NLB, Governor's Team Leader and Country Director of Action Aid Nigeria, Patrick Oceano Lumumba, former Director of the Kenyan Anti-Corruption Commission and Activist and Fiery Speaker, Amina Mohammed, Deputy Secretary of the United Nations. Nylov, Uplifting and Empowering Women, Nylov, Together We Can. Announcers, Ambassador Dr. Kema Chikwe, Chairman, National Organizing Committee, Regina Omo Adejo, Secretary, NOC, and Right Honorable Dame, Esther Odwehi, the founder. Nigerian youths are about the greatest asset the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Muhammadu Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth entrepreneurship support, yes, by Bank of Industry, the Youth Investment Fund by the CBN, and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youth, and so many other projects that are beneficial to youth directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely, with a degree of patience and time, it can achieve more. Nigerian youth must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag Youth for Greater Nigeria, pacifying the youth, unifying the nation. From dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day, NCA International is with you, in your living room, office, everywhere and anywhere. We provide the company you desire, in terms of balance and up-to-date news, programs and the best of entertainment. Tune in to the STV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Preview UK Channel 264, or you can download www.vigentv.co.uk, app for iOS or Android. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NCA International, African Windows to the World. Arise, all Nigerians! Let's applaud the courage of Flight Lieutenant Abayomi Dairo, aka the aggressor, for his skillful and dogged escape from the bloodthirsty bandits in the forest of Zamfara State. Three hearty cheers also to all military and security personnel who are tirelessly protecting fellow Nigerians from insurgency and banditry while maintaining peace and order. Nigerians are proud of our Bayomi Dairo and all our gallant men and women in uniform for sacrificing so much to keep us safe. We admire your courage and we say thank you. God bless the armed forces. God bless Nigeria. This message is from the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture.
stay with us and welcome to JOS. The federal government says it will explore the opportunities and available resources to support subsequent initiatives that will boost potato and other root crops production and processing in Nigeria. Minister of State Agriculture and Rural Development Mustafa Shehuri gave this invitation at the first International Potato Value Chain and Other Crops Summit in Jos. Caleb Gutin reports. No nation is said to attain any appreciable level of development in the midst of hunger. Agriculture, therefore, is the key to unlocking opportunities in food sufficiency. And to this, the federal government is supporting states to develop the sector to maximize the potentials therein. One crop that has been the pride of Plateau State is the Irish potato. And this time, with the collaboration of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and some international partners, greater achievements are set to unveil. <laughs> Governor Samuel Lalong represented and escorted the place of Plateau State in the production of exotic crops and vegetables. We've established three uh, processing areas and three marketing areas. So this provides a foundation. Other key players lauded the initiative with a commitment to pursue the realization of the objectives of the summit. The summit drew participants from federal, state, and local governments to address mainly issues of seedlings, production, and storage challenges. In Jos Caleb Gostin, NTN News. Wife of the Chief of Army Staff and President of the Nigerian Army Officers Wives Association, Naua Salama Shufaru Kiaya, is seeking collaboration with stakeholders to enhance the welfare of women, children, and the vulnerable in the society. She is pursuing her visit to the wife of Plateau State Governor, Mrs. Regina Lalo, in Jos, Ali Sabachukai Andrew has details. National President Naowa, who is also the wife of the Chief of Army Staff, says Naowa is a philanthropic non governmental organization aimed at assisting the poor, needy, and improving the standard of living in Nigerian barracks. Mrs. Farouk further explained that a strong synergy with the wife of the Plateau State Governor will go a long way in assisting women and wives of the army officers, especially wives of fallen heroes in skills acquisition. I want to tell you that my mission is to sustain women and wives of fallen heroes of and family. And what the Plateau State here is doing is bringing into that mission. Wife of the Plateau State Governor assures the president of her unflinching support in ensuring that the welfare and rights of women in the state and beyond is given top much priority. I want you to share me as we speak and we want you to extend our gratitude to your husband for their support, for their education, finding time to see that there is still as a result, not just in Plateau State, not just in the other states, but the country at large. The governor's wife was officially decorated as the patron one of the association in Plateau State. In Jos, Alisa Botukai Andrew, NTA News. And that's it from here. Back to Majati in Abuja for more news on Nationwide. Professionals in the construction industry are introducing innovative solutions from Nigeria's oil and energy and infrastructural investment sector aimed at averting disasters in a recovering economy. This highly collaborative approach dominated the 29th biannual conference of the Nigerian Institute of Quantity Surveyors and inauguration of its 26th council. Abubakar Usman Akwanga reports. General Christopher has the winner. It was meant to be the 29th Biennial Conference and inauguration of its 26th National Executive Council with Marcus Kenobi as its president and other national officers to pilot the affairs of the Institute for a period of two years. But the ceremonial engagement was not the only agenda on the table. I'm going to be looking at 
the integrity and the nature of the ground, they will be the money. Can you manage for ten? As you prepare to do the interview for the next two years, please accept my best wishes and prayers for a very successful journey. Global issues revolved around ways of preserving the environment and its resources against growing threats by climate change and other human activities like interference during collapse, which are inimical to the growth and development of the country. We need more and sustainable infrastructure to address the climate change induced disasters that are in West Africa or Nigeria's future past. The points of view have come of age and they must be recognized in all spheres of our economic activity. Representative of the Vice President and Minister of State Power, Gordon Abba, says Nigeria's commitment to energy transition from fossil to renewable energy and achieving minimal carbon emissions is gaining global support. At the last COP26, the promise that the money should come shortly, and we assure you that the, the money, when they arrive, will be applied judiciously. The Institute says it will transform outcome of its mandatory continuing professional development into cooperation and industrial use that will benefit the society. In Abuja, Abubakar Usmana Kwanga, NT News. The federal government is set to engage 1 million rice farmers through the Central Bank of Nigeria for the 2021-2022 dry season farming to boost rice production in the country. Musa Baba Ali reports. There are about 12 million farmers cultivating rice across the country under Rice Farmers Association of Nigeria. The farmers are all engaged under the Central Bank and Coborowas program. One million of them have indicated the interest in participating in the 2021-2023 dry season farming. And here are officials from the Central Bank of Nigeria, farmers associations, and input producers discussing the modalities for the farming season. What we've done is to look at the economics of production. What will it cost per hectare to produce uh, rice uh, in Nigeria? And it is uh, now agreed that uh, all uh, those that are providing uh, input uh, will provide their price and it was done openly. The Central Bank of Nigeria is providing loan facility under the Anchor Borrowers Program to create additional 5 million direct and indirect jobs across the rice production value chain. On each farmer, at least 10 people will be jointly engaged. So if we are able to capture 10 or 1 million farmers, it means 10 million people will be jointly engaged in the 2021-2022 dry season. Statistics provided by the Rice Farmers Association of Nigeria indicated that more than 9 million tons of rice paddy were produced under our own fed farming system. In Abuja, Musa Baba Ali, NTA News. Meanwhile, the National Agricultural Land Development Authority is partnering with the Jigal State Government in wheat production as part of its agricultural revitalization drive with Governor Badaru Abubakar endorsing 100 hectares of irrigation land for the pilot program. Mohamed Musa Ashkira reports. As the federal government's agency would declare mandates of harnessing the full potentials of the vast arable lands in Nigeria and empowering farmers, NASDA will indeed scale up wheat production by way of supporting the farmers in the state with all the necessary inputs. This is in line with the President Mohamed Buhari's desire to diversify the nation's economy, improving household income and enhancing revenue mobilization and generation nationwide through agriculture. Under this partnership, the Gulf State will provide the land and the farmers, while NASDA will provide necessary trainings and all the required farm inputs on loan basis to be paid at the harvest season. Governor Mohamed Badu Abubakar and the Executive Secretary of NASDA say the arrangement will go a long way in realizing this desire of the state to become a number one producer of wheat and rice in Nigeria with the estimated 400,000 hectares of untapped arable lands to be engaged for production in the state. Today, we are the first five, six states that continue to be and in your support and that of Central Bank, 
and the commission of the restoration of my operation, I'm sure you will take large chunk of that land and put it cultivation using our farmers to support the agricultural program. Gigawa State has done very well in encouraging wheat production. And the Mr. President has mandated NADA to engage our youth in agriculture, to attract them to see agriculture as a way of life and means of making money. A training session will soon hold for extension workers in the state that will go down to the farmers at the grassroots for enhanced production. From Dusi, Muhammad Musa Asira, NTA News. Similarly, the African Development Bank is investing $563 million for the establishment of special agro-processing zones in Nigeria. The president of the bank, Akin Wumi Adesina, made this known during a visit to Governor Abdullahi Umar Gandude in Kano. Abdullahi Mustafa reports. With a vast cultivable land and about 13 dams, Kano has agriculture as the main preoccupation of its people. Unfortunately, however, not much of the sector's numerous potential have been harnessed. Poor agricultural practices and low processing schools are among the identified causative factors. Addressing these and to minimize post harvest losses in from the planned establishment of special agro processing zone in Kano and four other states by the African Development Bank. The huge amount of losses we have, create more competitive value trade, transform the rural areas from zones of economic misery to zones of, of economic prosperity, and to increase the amount of resources that the state has. Governor Abdullah Umar Ganduje, who was together with his Lagos state counterpart, Babaji Desangwa Olu, welcomed the initiative and assured of support and cooperation towards its actualization. Because the farmer requires not only to produce, not only to process, but also to market what we are doing and what all of us is to ensure that we can create the economy and that indeed we can take our state and our nation. During the interactive session, the FDB president also displayed plans to support federal and state governments in the areas of education, water, sanitation, and hygiene. In Kano, Abdullah Mustafa, NTA News. The president of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, has congratulated former president Good Luck Jonathan on his 64th birthday. In a statement, Senator Lawan rejoices with the former Nigerian leader for his good health and for the selfless service which he continues to offer in Nigeria and Africa, and adds that since leaving office, President Jonathan has put his high standing experience and energy to work for the attainment of peace, democracy, and development in Africa. Senator Lawan observes that the former president has demonstrated how a great leader should continue to play a very significant role even out of office as he believes in the Nigerian project. Meanwhile, the All Progressive Congress Co Governors Forum has felicitated with Governor Maimala Bunu, Chairman, APC Caretaker and Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee on the occasion of his 54th birthday. The APC Governors Forum in a statement by its chairman and governor of Kebbi State, Abubakar Achiku Bagudu, acknowledges and commends the leadership, vision and commitment of Governor May Malabuni to a united and prosperous Nigeria. The APC governors, while rejoicing with their colleague, also reaffirm their collective commitment to implementing programs which will strengthen the capacities of the progressive state to create jobs, stimulate economic activity, reduce inequality, and diminish poverty in Nigeria. Let's now join Saidia in our Sokoto Network Center for more reports on Nationwide. Over to you, Saidia. Federal government has reiterated a commitment towards ensuring zero normal disease in the country. This was stated by the Minister of Health, Professor Osage Ohanere, during the fifth national normal day organized by Medicine Sun Frontiers held in Sokoto. The latter, Abdullah, is 
20th of November is set aside every year to mark the National Noma Day in Nigeria. With the 2031 theme of the day, let us eradicate Noma together. Speakers at the event dwell on the causes with emphasis on prevention through awareness by all. Head of Mission, Medicine Science Frontiers, from the Selma, says from inception to 2014, they have impacted positively in partnership with government on the lives of Noma patients from 17 states in the country. As we the finding, the mission had treated 827 acute Noma patients, of whom 30% also treated for severe acute malnutrition. Pointing different Noma focal points in all the different LGAs in the areas where we have, uh, where we see most of the Noma cases coming from. Minister of Health, Dr. Osaiji Henry, represented by Director of Dentistry, Dr. Bola Awe, says federal government is determined to make Nigeria zero Noma disease. We are increasing collaborations with agencies of government, non-government organizations, so as to prevent Noma. Dr. State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Muhammad Ali Innami, represented by Director of Public Health, Abdurrahman Ahmad, laid the commitment of the state government toward creating awareness on the disease. Sultan Muhammad Sa'ad Abubakar, represented by District Head of Bodinga, Muhammad Bella Abdurrao, laid continuous sensitization of the public on the disease. Representative of the World Health Organization commended the organizer reiterating supportive commitment to health programs in the country. Some of the survivors of the Noma disease shared their experience. Noma is a disease that eats the tissue of the face that results in mild to severe deformity. In Sakwato, Dalat Abdullahi, NTA News. Zamfara State Government has flagged off the third phase of the COVID-19 mass vaccination campaign with a renewed commitment to curb the spread of the pandemic across the state. Jamili Ibrahim has more. Since the formal flag up of the fourth dose of COVID-19 vaccination exercised by Zamfara State Government in March this year, Authorities say so far only 55,000 persons have been fully vaccinated against the pandemic across the 40 local government areas of the state. The flag up of the third phase of the COVID-19 vaccination campaign is therefore aimed at bridging the wide gap in the course to achieving the national target of 50% of all eligible persons by 31st December 2022. Speakers of the State House of Assembly who doubles at the state chairman tax force on COVID-19 says the campaign will be extended to markets, motor parks, places of worship and hard to reach areas for wider coverage. Integrating the COVID-19 vaccine with other basic primary health care services such as screening for hypertension and diabetes is another strategy to be adopted by the said government toward ensuring that all eligible persons are vaccinated against the pandemic. Meanwhile, the said government has joined the ongoing crusade against the COVID-19 cadre deterioring by inaugurating a joint tax force against the Shodi Act. Other stakeholders who spoke at the event expressed readiness to strengthen collaboration of the government in curbing the spread of the pandemic. In the show, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. And that's it from here. Delhi in Portakot is standing by for news from that zone. For example, uh, has succeeded a great deal in sensitization during the pandemic, and we have found the community mobilization officers most effective in the sensitization and in the advocacy campaigns, creating awareness on the coronavirus uh, pandemic. We have done this through the, uh, the production of singles, which were very widely uh, distributed in different languages, in English, in Hausa, in Yoruba, in Igbo, in Kim, in Igala, in Kaluri, in Fulfulde, in, in Isoko, in, uh, in Bimi, in, in talk of any other language you can think of. We had translated sensitivity messages. to the younger generation is that they should learn from what we have started 
and what we have left. I do think that ordinarily I should not have been doing because that meant that I was working hard. Whatever assignment you are given in life, put in your best. The military is a disaster. More than a choice, all that is what we are trying to cure. and welcome to Fort Harcourt. The Minister of Defense, Major General Bashir Magati, has reaffirmed the commitment of President Mohamed Buhari's administration to continuously support the armed forces of Nigeria in developing requisite capacity to tackle the country's security challenges. The minister represented by the Chief of Defense Staff, Major General Lucky Irabo, such as these while speaking as guest of honor at the graduation ceremony of Naval Warfare Course 5 participants of the Naval War College held in Calabar. Udwaretam reports. In fulfillment of a coherent national security strategy, especially now that Nigeria is faced with numerous threats, a well-trained and motivated workforce is needed for the attainment of such goals. To this end, the Naval War College Nigeria, in fulfilling critical operations, has graduated 22 participants of the Naval Warfare Course 5, which had two officers from the Nigerian Army, two from the Nigerian Air Force, and 18 from the Nigerian Navy. Minister of Defense, represented by the Chief of Defense Staff, Major General Loki Rabo, congratulated the graduates and hoped that expected training outcomes are evident in their capacity. Do they expect to play your role by all the Cross River State Government pledges support to the Nigerian Navy and the entire armed forces in providing security. Some graduates and deserving members of the faculty were awarded for their hard work. Meanwhile, Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Awal Gambo, had earlier inspected different project sites embarked upon by the Eastern Naval Command for smooth operations of its personnel. In Calabar, Udwak Ethan, NCA News. In another development, the 6th Division Nigeria Army is reaching out to the less privileged within its area of oppression to further strengthen civil military cooperation in the ongoing oppression steel water campaign. Kinsley Amadou report. The objective of Operation Steel Water is to address prevailing security challenges during the Ember months. To actualize this objective, the 6th Division Nigerian Army has continued in its engagement with the civil populace. This time, the Nigerian Army visited Priesthood Orphanage LL1 Port Harcourt, where relief materials were handed over to the management of the home for the well-being of the children. General Officer Commanded 6th Division Nigerian Army, represented by the garrison commander, said the motive of the exercise is to catch them young. Mm -hmm. Donation of the of opening is also part of the civil military operation activity lined up for the exercise in water. And I must congratulate the management and staff of this opening for their sacrifice and the effort in bringing up these children. The 6th Division Nigerian Army has also in the past reached out to Ahoda and Omok communities through a medical outreach and engagement to strengthen civil military cooperation in Port Harcourt, Kingsley, Amajiri, and TA News. And that's it from here. Nationwide continues with Nagatu in Abuja.
Thank you, Jenny. Now to matters of power supply. The electricity distribution company in Kaduna says it is grappling with poor payment for services by customers as well as vandalism of critical infrastructure, which continue to pose serious threats to its operations. Atari Maxwell reports. Comfort Travelers runs a business that requires constant power supply, and in her opinion, it is not as feasible as it should to enable her achieve results. Honestly, the situation of life here is very, very poor. Residents of Kaduna Metropolis share similar sentiments. Not steady, but uh, we're managing it. I must be sincere with you. There's a treatment. It's just that uh, at times when you expect to have light, they just switch off their light. The distribution firm with franchise areas include Kaduna, KB, Sokoto, and Zafra State says it can only distribute what comes to it from the national grid. But there are other critical challenges, including non-payment by customers as at when due, vandalism of facilities, and other legacy issues affecting the sector. And lately, because of the, the challenges and the con new uh, line being constructed along uh, uh, Benue to Lafia, to just access, uh, we are kind of mandated to drop supply to Kaduna, especially because uh, just to go the access now take their supply through, through Kaduna. Finding so average supply available is 320 megawatts per hour against the expected 366 as customers get supply from 4 to 20 hours daily. In a related development, residents of Kaduna are worried about the cost of cooking gas. I bought gas with 9,000 naira for 12 kids instead of two the thing they increase day by day. One of the dealers selling gas is also complaining about patronage by customers in Kaduna. Atari Maxwell, NTA News. Meanwhile, the federal government has been seeking solutions to concerns of electricity consumers in Edo State through the Competition and Consumer Protection Commission with this complaint resolution platform to address customer dissatisfaction instantly. There is hope for improved electricity supply to consumers in the state. Ogotukuka on our report. The general distribution and usage of electricity is one that stops analysis daily. You say it's too much and uh, you don't get light. You will start by that and you don't get light. They give you, they give you like two, uh, two hours, three hours to stop. And then at the rest of, for the rest of the day, you won't get no light. Where the give up be? Where we ask them? What are we paying for? BBC's internal complaints management explains the reasons for some of the issues. The major issue I have here is building issues. Of billing, uh, as a result of billing estimates. Another major issue is that we don't have meter. Another issue that limited supply, which I've assumed that we have what to call a lot of costing in terms of our duty. Either from our network, we need to reinforce, or from system uh, constraints. All these put together have not made us to give other things for sure. To further address this problem, the government is currently using the STMO power plant to connect electricity system offices and streets. Some people, because of the bad connections they are having, they are when they put on the gen, that gen again will be feeding on their meter. The meter will be reading. When there is good uh, disco supply light, your meter will be reading. When there is no uh, disco light, you are on the gen. The gen, the, the meter is going to be reading. So they should be trying and be checking all their connections properly. Then the disco too, any complaints they come up to them, they try and act promptly. Most of these calls have not been forthcoming. So that's why we believe that it is in order to go around. We have to give voice to the voiceless. And our effort is really to get to the grassroots. The resolution here by stakeholders is that citizens must be treated right in what they consume. Ogotukuka on our NTA News. Thank you, Ogotukuka. The hope of women and children at the Kuchigoro internally displaced persons camp has been renewed with a visit from the House of Representatives Member Spouses Association led by the wife of the Speaker, House of Representatives, Salama Chu Badrabi Amila. Mobolaji Moridirin tells us more. 
Many Nigerians have been displaced and are now living in internally displaced camps. A Sir John Otachi year old mother of three fled from Borno State to Abuja in 2014 due to Boko Haram insurgents. Feeding, clothing, and housing are her major challenges. We come here to 14. From 2014 to now, it's eight years now. We need more help from people and the government. We need more help. The House of Representatives members help this association is in this particular camp to offer basic duty service distribute food items, and provide free medical outreach. Let them know that they're not forgotten, they're our sisters. It's just a condition that they're passing through. We don't come just to give them um, items. We also want them to have experiences that make them feel as normal as they used to feel, even though they're not in their homes. So we've been here this morning, this morning, providing medical care and uh, medical education too, to the hair, you know, giving hair talk to the people here. This assistance may be little, but for Esther John, it shows the commitment of the present administration. And I give our money away from her for today. We can do with play our head with a happy way to come to the day before she will be happy with our authority. The event is the first in the history of the Ninth National Assembly. In Abuja, Mobolaji, Mori Diri, NTA News. Similarly, the Road Safety Officers' Wives Association and Coalition of Road Safety Organizations have advocated proper sensitization of road users as one of the remedies of reducing crashes on Nigerian roads. This was made known when they visited some road accident victims at the Gorki General Hospital, Abuja, to mark the World Day for the Remembrance of Victims of Road Accidents. Thomas Obekere reports. 39-year-old Jacob Amokaro, who has been in Gariki General Hospital for over two months with a fractured leg, is another victim of hit and run by unknown driver, though his treatment is currently on hold as a result of his inability to pay the bill. But the visit of the Federal Road Safety Officer's wife has given him reasons to believe more in Nigeria as a nation. When I came here, we were talking about that we would deposit 500000 and I think uh, that was the last one in market, and I have to do that, you know, for them to start treatment. And they started the treatment um, after a month. They stopped treating because they brought a standing bill for me, which is almost six hundred and thirty something thousand. Wife of the federal road safety call, Marshal Bolanle Oyeyeni, who was represented by the deputy coordinator of Road Safety Officers Wife Association, and Ope, expressed the need to show empathy. To victims of road accidents. Road users should reduce their speed on the road. It will minimize the accident. Not that it will, it will be uh, totally eradicated. If you go to any hospital and there was an accident that occurred and they refuse to treat, please get the details of the hospital, forward it even to the coalition, to the road safety. It will be taken and act upon with an immediate effect. I'm usually surprised when I hear on air that um, patients get turned away for life or deposit or assistance or deposit. It's pretty strange. A good number of patients are operated. They, they don't have even a cup of penny. World Day of Remembrance for Road Traffic Victims is marked on the 24th of November every year to sensitize road users on how to avoid crashes. In Abuja, Thomas Obeteri, NTA News. Up next is Sports Update. Black Kings have continued to show as Manchester United confirmed that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has lost his role as head coach of the club. The speculation surrounding Norwegian's future gathered pace in the aftermath of Saturday's 4-1 loss to Watford, which made its five defeat from the team's last seven Premier League matches. Another former player, Michael Carrick, who act as interim manager till the end of the season. Lady Golf Association of Nigeria now has a new president, Suzulet Moye Yeri from Asaba Delta State. The former lady captain of Iboris Golf Club and a three time Zona Vice President of Elgan emerged the fifteenth president during the annual general meeting of the association held in Asaba Delta State. She will still hold the affair of Elgan for the next 24 months. 
and some prominent Nigerians came out and marched to take part in the inaugural Kiki Memorial, tagged Work for Hard, which started and terminated at the Unity Fountain in Abuja. People are admitting the young slum both times. It's the fact that you are not conscious of the state of your heart. The annual heart awareness work is designed to promote and help spread the importance of having a healthy heart and a better lifestyle. This special update of Moyeni Unubu. The sports update concludes nationwide this beautiful Sunday. Do remember to keep connecting with the NPA to stand against rape and rapists. I'm Nadia Atikijani, wishing you a fantastic week ahead. <laughs>